Today we're going to do Maria's uh, rhinoplasty. Maria had come to see me because she didn't like the way her nose looked. And in her case, primarily, her nose is a little bit crooked. She's got a bump. She's a little wide. She, we, we like her tip and she likes her tip. So we're going to do a, a reduction of her bump, straightening it out, and also thinning out her nose. I try uh, to make everybody uh, the best I can. Uh, and I, when I generally go into an operation, I have kind of a plan and uh, I call it my eight-step rhinoplasty. Uh, essentially what we'll do is we'll make incisions inside the nose. Then after that, we elevate the skin over the nose. After that, I rasp down the bone. Then I separate the upper lateral cartilages, which are these cartilages here. Then I trim the cartilages. I trim some of the dorsum, which is the, bump, the bone here. If I need to, I will remove a little bit of the uh, lower lateral cartilages and a little bit of the cartilage in the middle part of the nose. Uh, once we do that, then I do what's called medial osteotomies, which is a, I use a chisel and then break the bone in the middle. Then I go on the lateral side, which then narrows the nose. After I do that, I close the openings and I close all the other openings. Cast goes on. Uh, the cast is then removed uh, around three or four days. I put paper tape on. The paper tape stays on about three, four more days. So the, something is covering the nose a total of about seven days. Uh, after that, the patient uh, can uh, you know, have moderate activity, no, no running, no exercise. They can go back to work or school. Uh, and then at a month, they can do everything they need to do. Okay, so we're just inject, injecting the local. And what this does is uh, this has local anesthesia and epinephrine. Epinephrine makes it so there's less bleeding. And then after I inject, I like to wait about 15 minutes every time so I leave the room to make sure that I've waited the right amount of time so that we have let the least bleeding we could have during surgery. Okay, so we're gonna get started here. Uh, first thing I do is uh, I actually make sure the lighting is good. Good. So we're just going to cut some of the little hairs Jelly. so that later on, if she does have some dry blood or something and I have to clean it out, it won't hurt her. Okay. And a little peroxide. Perfect. Okay. So we're just cleaning her out, getting everything ready. Uh, first step is to get access to the bones that we're going to actually the thing that change the the thing that changes the, uh, the the way the nose look is the bones so we've got to get access to them and in doing so we make uh, four little incisions to get there make an incision now in the cayumela and then I make incision between the upper lateral cartilages and the lower lateral cartilages. And I just, this just defines where I'm going to make the incision. I use a 11 blade, which is a little different kind of blade. Just that's the only use of the blade I make when I'm doing the surgery. So this is just for access. Uh, this is the closed rhinoplasty. If we were doing it open, essentially what we would do is we'd make an incision right here at the cayumella, right here, a little small incision here, and then we could lift the skin up. Uh, since we're not doing it open, we're just, uh, now we use a different scissor to get access. We just separate there. And then this just elevates all the skin above this, the nose. So in, when I'm doing a, a nose surgery, I have basically a game plan. 
And then in addition to that one game plan, I have about three others just in case because everybody's nose is different. Sometimes you get surprises. You get in there and the bones are not what they're supposed to be or where they're supposed to be or they're not behaving accordingly. So it's just, while I'm operating, I'm constantly thinking of my next step. Now we've raised the entire skin over the bones. So that's, now we have access. Now I take a, a retractor and I just take a look, make sure I have everything that needs to be opened. Uh, because I've been patient, once I injected the anesthesia that has the epinephrine, it seems to be, you know, nice and relatively dry. It's always bleeding, but not too much. So now I've elevated the skin. I have the access. And you can really see why this operation is really difficult to get to, to learn how to do it really well because everything you do is through this little hole here and through this finger here. And actually, I've got a very incredible assistant in Breesy. So she, uh, she and I both feel it to make sure that we're feeling the same thing. And because she actually, you know, I'm, I always operate on the patient's right side. She's on the left. She has also an ability to see in an area that I can't see, so she might mention something along the way that she sees something that I don't see. So it's just a little bit of an insurance. So now we've done the elevate, we've done the four incisions, we've elevated the skin. Now I'm gonna take a rasp, which is basically a file, and I start taking down the bump. I like to do it this way uh, because I find it safer. I've never over rasped where some surgeons use a big osteotome and they just rat, they take the whole edge down. Uh, I just find this is a little safer. After doing a few thousand noses, it, I like safety, making sure that we're gonna get a nice result, not over resection. So what this does is it takes down that square top that she had. And then when I get to a certain level where I've opened it up, I could use a scissor to separate the upper lateral cartilages from the septum. And that allows me to do some more work. Now I'm gonna take a look and see how things are looking. And the bump is a little further down. And so now what I'm gonna do is take a scissor, separate the cartilage, separate the, the septum from the cartilages. So that actually thins out the mid third of the nose right here. And it gives me access to taking down the bone here and the cartilage. Now, her nose was a little full in the mid third here and so what I'm doing <clears throat> is when once I separate that there's a little triangle that I'm going to take out right in here that makes this come in just the exact amount that I want if after doing this I still find that she's a little more full in the tip. <clears throat> I can always take more cartilage. At this point though, <clears throat> judging from her picture and what I anticipated, we're not gonna need to do that. So now I'd like to sit down and look at what I have. And here you can see we have a, a pretty good sized bump. And so now we're gonna start removing the bump. I'm gonna hold, she's gonna hold this. We're gonna take down some soft tissue so I have a better view of what I'm doing here. Okay, and now I'm gonna take out some of that bump that was sticking out. And this is, this is what was causing the bump, this, this cartilage here. And now 
you can see that she's much more reduced and uh, we're well on our way to removing the bump. Now I'm taking out some of the lateral cartilage. There it is. Same thing here. And we're well on the way to reducing the bump. Now I'll use a, a rasp. There's different kinds of rasps. This is a coarse rasp, which means it takes down more as I want it to. Now you can see we're, I think we've been doing this for a total of about, uh, what do you think, about 10 minutes? Five, 10 minutes? Mm -hmm. And if you look, if you look at her picture and you look at her, she's about there. So it's a, it's a really great operation. I love doing this because it really changes lives. It's just dramatic. People, after they've had their noses done, they come in, even after within a month, and they just carry themselves differently. Uh, I take on this as a major responsibility, even though I've been doing this for 25 years in Miami. Uh, every single nose is like, you know, I, I believe in the, almost like the restaurant mentality. You're only as good as your last meal, and here you're only as good as your last nose. So everyone has to be perfect or near perfect. And fortunately, I've been pretty lucky in doing that. So now I'm just, this is all the fine tuning. We've already done the big stuff. We've taken down the big bumps. Uh, and now we're just going to fine tune the cartilages and Here you can see we're about it's ten, 10 minutes into it and we've already made a significant change in her, how she looks. And this is sort of what I, she wanted. So I don't really try to do more than they want. I, in, in the imaging, it gives me a really good idea of what, what it is they want. So I'm, now I'm feeling and I use this uh, gel to be more, so I can be more sensitive. And of course, I know what I'm feeling. I feel a little bump. But I'm not going to tell that to Breezy. I'm going to say, Breezy, what do you feel? And then she's going to do this. And, yeah. and then I'll say, well, how does it feel? Right there. And I know when she gives me that eye that there's something there. Uh, so now I'm going to look. I'm going to feel. I'm going to look up. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to see exactly where I see it, where I felt it. This is what we just took out. See? We're talking about millimeters. See, right here. This. This. So this is an operation of millimeters, especially since it's middle of the face, can't hide it, can't tell a patient, gee, put a bag on your face for the next six months while you know, this gets better and then we'll reoperate. So it's, it's a pretty stressful operation. So now we're just cleaning, making sure that it's all smooth, there's no extra tissue there. So we're putting this ointment, this uh, right there. Feel two little things here. Yeah, right there. And you can actually see there's a this tiny little bump. And when you look at it, if you see this, this is just a very small amount of tissue, but you can feel it, and that and that. It's, so, it's sort of like the P in the, the uh, princess in the P. It doesn't seem like anything at the time of surgery, but afterwards it becomes a big problem. <laughs> well, not a big problem, it just doesn't look good. So we're just making sure that everything is really, really smooth. Yeah, I think it's gonna be good. It's a, yeah, I still feel one little bit right, right about there. And this seems ridiculous, but that really is what we're getting rid of. It's very, you know, you have to have very sensitive 
fingertips. And so two is always better than one. So this is, if you pan out to here, that was what she had. Number two is what I originally thought we'd do. Number three is another one. And I think she's got it right. We're right on there. You can take a look how we've done it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at her skin, the Cayumela skin, which usually when we rotate by reducing the cartilage here, it rotates the tip up slightly. And so we need to remove a little bit of skin right here. And this operation is really all about details. It's all little, the little things you do to make it look great. So this is just a little bit of cartilage. So I'm going to take one more last feel. And I don't feel anything. I'm going to have Bracey feel it one more time because that's the insurance package. How's it feel? Good. Good. Okay. So now that we did that, I'm going to take a look again. You can never look enough. Sometimes when you rasp things, the little, there are little pieces of cartilage that get, connect, get go between the septum and the, and there you go, the septum and the uh, upper lateral cartilages. And unless you remove them, they sort of, when you, when you do the osteotomy, which is, where, you're at, where we're gonna break, we're gonna do next is we're gonna break the bones. Sometimes that pops out and then you can feel it post-op. It comes up as a bump that wasn't there originally. And I feel the bones here, I'm gonna rasp on just one more time here, a little bit, any palpable or bones that you can feel. Okay, one more look. Everything is repetitive because I want it to be perfect or near perfect and it's always it always seems that when you're finished you're really not so you can see how wide her bones are so at, we're gonna bring those we're gonna narrow them in, in in a little bit these stitches are all dissolvable and uh, so there's no need for me to remove them later down the line The uh, initial excision of cartilage at, this, at the here is going to narrow the tip enough so we don't need to narrow that as well. So basically with a rhinoplasty you do what's necessary. You don't have to do the same thing to every patient. You use a, a similar technique in, in the sense that you have the same access. You develop a routine and by developing a routine you're going to be a safer surgeon but in that routine, you modify it for each patient. If there's a thick tip, you work on the tip. If there's a thick upper middle, middle part of the nose, you work on that middle part of the nose. If there's, and so with each, each patient, you modify it as you go, but you have a set routine so that you don't miss anything and you don't, you don't make mistakes because you don't have a set routine. When you uh, do a nose like this, there's only about four to six stitches holding everything together. The rest is held by the glue, which is your own glue, the fibrin, and, uh, and, the, and the bones. And usually the plan that we have for patients goes the way as planned, but occasionally you have to modify it, and, and that's why you know, you really need to pick a surgeon who has a lot of experience in doing no surgery because frequently you, you don't want the, the surprise to be one that the surgeon hasn't seen. So once I finish this, which is closing the Cayumela, uh, will it re-inject the 
bone area uh, so that you know anesthesia doesn't have to give her more anesthesia while we do this so that post-op there won't be as much pain. Uh, there's a different, this is, this is where we break the bone and as I showed you earlier we showed how thick her nose was because once I've taken the top off which is the bump the bones now look much wider. Osteotomies are made, uh, let me show, uh, are made with an osteotome. This, uh, there are people who use this and then have a guarded one. The problem with a guarded one is it's got this big metal thing and it tears more tissue. I like a small, tiny one. That, that way you have less swelling and I think it heals better. And then uh, this is a, a uh, hammer that Breesy's been uh, using for 11 years with me. Uh, and you can see it's really been worn down just from the number of people we've done. But uh, we're comfortable with it. It has a nice feel to it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're going to uh, do an, the osteotomy. The osteotomy, we do a medial one, which is right along the bone this way. And then I go down along the, I go right to the piriform aperture, which is where the nose bone and the face meet. I go really, really low. I do it on the other side and then we fracture it. Okay, so this is the osteotomy. Tap, 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 good. And we'll do the other side as well, get that ready to go. Tap, 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 good. Okay. Tap, 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 tap. You have to have a real co well, well coordinated team. Tap tap, tap tap, because you want to make sure you're holding it all. Tap tap, tap tap, tap tap, tap tap, tap tap, tap tap. Good. Okay. So we've done the osteotomy, and then this is where we break it. And now what you want to do is you can come here and see just how thin we've gotten this. So now you can see where before her bones were here, look what they are. And we have a little bleeding here, but it's actually been pretty good. You can just see how nice and thin it is now. So it fits her face, right? Very nice, and then if you can look at the profile, you can see how the profile is beautiful. Okay, so, so okay, so, now that we finished the osteotomies, I ch double checked. Sometimes there's a little extra cartilage. It's making the making the nose a little, the contour a little thicker here. And I make sure that we have not removed too much so that her airway is still intact. Uh, it's always helpful when you have you're having your nose done. You know, someone who knows intranasal work in case you know some patients need some septal, some some work on the septum. Also some work on the turbinates, she did not need that. Now I'm just going to close the osteotomy sites. In the past, you know, when I first started, we used to say, oh, you got to leave them open so there's less swelling. Uh, I found that that's not the case. One of the nice things is I don't use packing. And part of the reason I don't use packing is because I do close these little openings so you don't have a lot of bleeding and then it just makes it much nicer for the patient and the family that they, she'll be able to breathe. She'll be able to breathe during her, uh, her recovery. Uh, we've been doing a survey now for about six months to a year. And uh, we find that the average person who has a rhinoplasty takes about one pain medicine, uh, maybe even just a plain Tylenol, but they do take uh, maybe one pain medicine for the, that first night and then after that, there's essentially no pain. I used to tell patients that I figured they thought I was lying. So uh, we did the survey and it's amazing uh, what they anticipate and what they're gonna get pain-wise. And if uh, you wanna just look one more time on here, you can sort of get an idea of how it looks. So you had somebody who was really wide, now she's got a nice thin nose, straight as before it was veered over to her left and the dorsum is just really pretty and it's just gonna she's just gonna love it I think
So now we're gonna just put paper tape and then the cast and we're done. And that's it. So I'm trimming the cast that I'm gonna put on her nose. And uh, so that took about 30 minutes. Uh, we'll wake her up uh, and take her to recovery. She'll spend about an hour in recovery and uh, then she'll go home. And uh, I think she's gonna be a very happy young lady. She's beautiful. This is just gonna add a little bit of, it's gonna be sort of the icing on her cake. Uh, and usually this takes, you know, the pa patient's noses take a full year to get to where they, they're supposed to. But usually with her, she'll know the difference right away. I mean, when I take the cast off, she's gonna have a big difference. And then by a month, she'll, look, she'll be able to resume all her normal activities. And then what I generally like to do, because I know I'm a parent, a very anxious parent, uh, is that I like to, as soon as we wake her up and she is awake and I know that everything is fine, I'll go talk to her parents uh, and let them know as my nurse and assistant are taking the patient to recovery room. That way they, they have the least amount of time to wait and for, uh, for her to know that everything's safe. So this is a uh, heat activated plastic and uh, they put the hot water. It's now a little cool. We put it right on here and then Breezy will give me some ice compresses there. Perfect. And then it cools it down and it sticks to the tape. The nice thing with this material is it, you know, it's, it's, uh, it sticks right on the tape. It stays there as long as we want it. Uh, usually, as I had said earlier, we'll have the patient come back uh, two, three days later to take a tip dressing off so she can breathe a little better. And uh, the whole cast and everything will be off her nose by seven days. We have Telfa which is a non-stick material. Uh, I use a little bit of gauze to, as an absorbent. I like to have everything nice and neat. So put this around there. Uh, this will stay on for about three days. I don't like the patients to change it because oftentimes when moms or dads or they try to change it, it takes a cast off. So we leave this on and the patient will add to this dressing and if it gets a little saturated take that dressing off but this stays on for three days you can actually breathe throughout it but it's not uh not a completely good breath but you can breathe much more than in the past If you're interested in anything about facial plastic surgery, uh, I also write a column in the Miami Herald uh, every other Tuesday. Uh, it's called Plastic Surgery 101. Uh, I, ask, I answer questions of, uh, from patients and from uh, the public as to what uh, is plastic surgery, uh, all the questions that you might have pertaining to it. Our website, www.miamiplasticsurgery.com and uh, you can always reach me directly at cwolf at miamiplasticsurgery.com.